The Kitchen of Chef Mark is celebrating one year on YouTube. To help commemorate this special occasion, we're putting together a brand new cookbook style video called A Collection of European Recipes. We'll show you mouthwatering recipes like these. Pork tenderloin medallions, croque monsieur, shrimp puttanesca, veal cordon bleu, and chateaubriand. These recipes are going to be delicious, so stick around and we'll show you how we make them. Tonight is a taste of Europe. France, Portugal, and Italy. We're making pork tenderloin medallions with a mushroom and pork wine sauce with risotto and prosciutto wrapped asparagus. It's going to be delicious, so stick around and we'll show you how we make it. Tonight is a taste of Europe. Pork tenderloin medallions from France with a savory mushroom wine sauce from Portugal with risotto, a rice dish originating from northern Italy, and asparagus wrapped in prosciutto, also originating from Italy almost a thousand years ago. Our mise en place for tonight's dish is one pound pork tenderloin, one half cup of flour, and one teaspoon each of salt, pepper, coriander, onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika, and one stick of butter. For our mushroom pork wine sauce, one stick of butter, eight ounces of sliced mushrooms, one shallot chopped, one half cup of port wine, one cup of chicken stock, two ounces of Natalie's lemon juice, one half cup of heavy cream, and salt and pepper to taste. For our risotto, extra virgin olive oil, one cup of arborio rice, two small yellow onions chopped, three cloves of garlic minced, three cups of chicken stock, one half cup of dry vermouth, and one half cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. And for our asparagus, eight spears of asparagus, eight thin slices of prosciutto, and two ounces of Natalie's lemon juice. We'll start with the asparagus. Wrap each spear of the asparagus with a slice of prosciutto. Then place the tray of asparagus into a 400 degree oven for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, sprinkle some Natalie's lemon juice onto the asparagus, place it back into the oven at 170 degrees to stay warm. The risotto is next. Put some extra virgin olive oil into a pot and bring the heat up to medium. Put the chopped onions into the pot and give them a nice stir so that they are coated evenly with the olive oil. Saute the onions for five minutes. In a large pan, melt one half a stick of butter and add in some olive oil on medium heat. Add in the mushrooms and give them a nice stir. Season to taste with salt and pepper. Put the tenderloin onto the cutting board, remove any silver skin and unwanted fat and season it to taste with salt and pepper. Then cut the tenderloin into two inch slices. Back in the pan of mushrooms, add in the chopped shallots and give it a nice stir. Back in the pot for the risotto, add in your cup of arborio rice. Give it a stir and saute it for five minutes. Then add in the minced garlic, give it a stir and cook it for two more minutes. We'll start to add in our chicken stock a little at a time and constantly stir. Now take the bowl of seasoned flour and stir everything together using a whisk. Take the sliced tenderloin medallions, coat them in the flour, and put them onto a plate. Once the mushrooms have cooked, get a slotted spoon and remove the mushrooms from the pan and put them into a bowl. You can leave the mushrooms on the counter or put them into the warm oven. The mushrooms will be put into the sauce a little later on. Take the sliced tenderloin medallions and put them into the same pan that the mushrooms were cooked in. Cook them for three minutes. Then turn them over and cook for another three minutes. Also cook the sides for one minute. Then put the sliced tenderloin medallions onto a sheet of aluminum foil. Wrap them so that they stay moist and place them into the warm oven. Now it's time to make our sauce. Remove any excess olive oil and pour the port wine into the pan. 
Use your spoon to lift the pieces of meat and mushrooms that were stuck to the bottom of the pan. There's a lot of flavor in them. Add in your chicken stock and your lemon juice. And then your heavy cream. It's best if the cream is heated and reduced. Add in some of the seasoned flour that was used earlier for the medallions. This will help thicken the sauce a little bit. Stir it vigorously with a whisk. Add in the mushrooms and give it a stir. Let it simmer for a few minutes to reduce and thicken. Then turn off your heat, add in a chunk of cold butter and give it a stir. The sauce is now ready to serve. After about 20 minutes of stirring, our risotto is nearly done. Add in the lemon juice, the vermouth, and the Parmesan cheese and give it a stir. We'll leave the lid off so that the risotto dries out just a little bit. And now it's time to plate our dish. Garnish the plate with some thyme or rosemary sprigs and add a sliced mushroom. Then use a ring mold and add the risotto. Place three of the tenderloin medallions onto the plate next to the risotto. Then add a few spears of the prosciutto wrapped asparagus. Next, we'll ladle some of the mushroom port wine sauce over the pork tenderloin medallions. Add a sprig of thyme to the risotto and sprinkle some dried parsley onto the dish. Add some balsamic dots and we're done. And there it is, a taste of Europe. Pork tenderloin medallions from France, topped with a mushroom port wine sauce from Portugal, served with risotto and prosciutto wrapped asparagus from Italy. It was delicious. Until next time, bon appetit. Tonight is a taste of France. We're making a croque monsieur, a delicious hot sandwich made with brioche bread, sliced honey maple ham, Gouda cheese and top with a creamy bechamel sauce. It's going to be delicious, so stick around and we'll show you how we make it. Tonight is a taste of France. Croc Monsieur, a delicious sandwich that originated in France in the early 1900s. Made with toasted brioche bread, sliced honey maple ham, Gruyere cheese, and a tasty bechamel sauce made from butter, flour, milk, sugar, fresh ground pepper, cinnamon and nutmeg. Our mise en place for tonight's dish is two tablespoons of flour, one and a quarter cup of milk, one tablespoon of sugar, a half teaspoon each of salt and pepper, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And for the sandwich, you'll need six slices of brioche bread, unsalted butter, 16 slices of honey maple ham, and eight slices of Gruyere or Gouda cheese. To toast the bread, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Place the bread onto a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and place it in the oven for five to six minutes until the bread is toasted. Next, we'll get the bechamel sauce ready. Put the butter into a small pot on low heat. Once the butter is melted, add in the flour and whisk it for two to three minutes until smooth. Add in the sugar, the nutmeg and cinnamon, and the salt and pepper and whisk it all together. By now the bread should be toasted, so remove it from the oven. Slowly add the milk to the pot and whisk it in. Remember to keep the heat on low because we don't want the milk to burn. After a few minutes, the bechamel sauce will thicken. Using a large spoon, begin to put the bechamel sauce onto the slices of toasted bread. Make sure that the sauce coats the bread thoroughly. We'll start to build the sandwich with the sliced ham first. Try to keep it fluffy by folding the ham into small portions, and then add the cheese. Now we're using Gouda cheese here, but the traditional croque monsieur is made with Gruyere cheese, which is shredded. 
Add another few spoonfuls of the bechamel sauce on top of the cheese, then stack one of the slices of bread on top. Repeat the process with the ham and the cheese and add the last piece of bread to the top of the sandwich. Add some more bechamel sauce to the bread and then add another slice of the cheese. Turn the oven up to 400 degrees and place the croque monsieur into the oven for about 10 minutes. You can also place it under the broiler for a minute or two at the end if you like your cheese bubbly and brown. Place your sandwich onto a cutting board and slice it in half. We're now ready to plate our dish. And there it is, a taste of France. Croque Monsieur, made with toasted brioche bread, sliced honey maple ham, gouda cheese, and topped with a sweet and savory bechamel sauce. It was delicious. Until next time, bon appetit. Tonight is a taste of Naples, Italy. We're making shrimp puttanesca, a dish made famous during World War II. We're using fresh jumbo shrimp, San Marzano tomatoes, and imported linguine from Italy. It's going to be delicious, so stick around and we'll show you how we make it. Tonight is a taste of Naples, Italy. We're making shrimp puttanesca, a dish made famous during World War II. Jumbo shrimp peeled into veined, sautéed in extra virgin olive oil, and cooked with San Marzano tomatoes, capers, and sliced Kalamata olives. I was 20 years old when I visited Naples for the first time. As a sailor in the U.S. Navy, we pulled into the port of Naples. It was later that I learned about shrimp puttanesca and how the ladies of the night made it to attract their men as they came in from the sea. Our mise en place tonight is one pound of fresh jumbo shrimp, four ounces of grated Parmesan Reggiano cheese, 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes, four tablespoons of sliced Kalamata olives, two ounces of anchovy paste, two tablespoons of capers, one pound of linguine, extra virgin olive oil, fresh basil and thyme, four cloves of minced garlic, one yellow onion chopped, fresh scallions and Italian parsley, and two ounces of Natalie's lemon juice. To get started, pour a few ounces of extra virgin olive oil into a pan. Add in a few ounces of anchovy paste and spread it onto the pan to get it hot. Then add in two tablespoons of capers, four tablespoons of Kalamata olives, a chopped onion, garlic puree, and let it all cook for a few minutes. We took the San Marzano tomatoes and put them in a blender. Now some chefs will tell you to mash them using your hands. Add the tomatoes to a pan and give them a nice stir. Season the sauce with salt and pepper, and then add in some fresh basil. Give it a stir and let it simmer. In a separate pan, add in some extra virgin olive oil and turn the heat up to medium. We will cook our shrimp in this pan. Add in the fresh shrimp now earlier we cut the shrimp in half long ways. This extra step ensures that the shrimp will twist while they cook. It adds to the texture of the shrimp and gives them the feel of a lobster. Add in a few pieces of the whole shrimp and try to spread the tails out. These will be used for garnish later. Sprinkle a small pinch of seafood seasoning onto the shrimp Many people will use Old Bay. We're using a special blend of seasoning custom made for us by our friends at Elite Spice. After the shrimp have cooked for a few minutes, we'll add them to the pan of sauce and we'll give them a nice stir. Our final product to cook is the linguine. Bring a pot of salted water to a boil and add in the pound of linguine. Cook it for about 10 minutes until it's al dente. 
Drain the pasta and add in a chunk of butter. This will help keep the noodles from sticking and it adds to the flavor. And now it's time to plate our dish. Spoon in the shrimp around the bowl a little at a time. Using a meat fork, add the linguine to the bowl and twirl it. Using a ladle, put some of the tomato sauce on top of the shrimp around the bowl. Clean the bowl as you go. Then add some dried chopped parsley around the dish and a sprig of fresh thyme. Add one of the jumbo shrimp to the bowl and then add a second jumbo shrimp to the bowl. And we're done. And there it is, a taste of Naples. Shrimp puttanesca with jumbo shrimp, San Marzano tomatoes, and imported linguine from Italy. It was delicious. Until next time, bon appetit. Tonight we're making a classic entree from France, veal cordon bleu. We'll take thin sliced veal, black forest ham, smoked gruyere and gouda cheese, and spinach leaves and wrap it up into a roll. We'll dip it into eggs and coat it with Italian breadcrumbs and saute it in an extra virgin olive oil. We'll top it off with a mushroom and herb cheese wine sauce, and we'll serve it with green beans and penne regatta. It's going to be delicious, so stick around and we'll show you how we make it. Tonight we're making veal cordon bleu. You can also make this dish with chicken, but tonight we're making it with veal. This classic French dish is made with thin slices of veal, layered with black forest ham, smoked gruyere and gouda cheese, and spinach. Rolled up tight and dipped in flour, eggs, and Italian breadcrumbs, then sauteed in extra virgin olive oil on all sides, baked in the oven and sliced. Drizzled with a mushroom and herb cheese wine sauce made from shallots, garlic, sliced portobello mushrooms, chicken stock, Chardonnay wine, and heavy cream. Our mise en place for tonight's dish is four thin slices of veal, sliced black forest ham, smoked Gruyere cheese and Gouda cheese, spinach leaves, three eggs, flour, Italian breadcrumbs, extra virgin olive oil, two ounces each of Natalie's lemon juice and lime juice, one cup of Chardonnay wine, one cup of chicken stock, eight ounces of sliced mushrooms, three ounces of garlic and herb cheese, one cube of garlic puree, three chopped shallots, salt and pepper, one half cup of heavy cream, one stick of unsalted butter, one half box of penne regatta pasta, and a tablespoon of turmeric for the water. Our first step is to place a piece of plastic wrap onto the cutting board and lay out four pieces of thin sliced veal. Season the veal with salt and pepper. Add the sliced ham, the spinach leaves, the sliced Gouda cheese, and the sliced Gruyere cheese. We overlapped the ham to keep the cheese from oozing out once it's heated. Wrap the sides up, and then roll from the top down as tight as possible. Once everything is rolled, put it in the middle of the plastic wrap, fold the wrap over, hold the ends, and roll it so that it becomes very tight. Repeat the rolling process a few times, and once it's nice and tight, we'll place it into the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. In a large stainless steel pan, add a few tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and a few chunks of butter. Turn the heat to medium and allow the butter to melt. Take the roll out of the refrigerator and unwrap the plastic. Dip the roll into the plate of flour and then into the eggs and then into the breadcrumbs. Ensure that the entire roll is coated with the breadcrumbs. 
Place the roll into the pan of butter and olive oil and saute it for about three minutes. Using a large spoon, baste the butter and olive oil onto the roll. Then turn it and cook for another three minutes and repeat this process until all sides are golden brown. Then put the roll onto a sheet pan with aluminum foil on it. Turn the oven to 325 degrees and place the pan into the oven for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, turn the oven to 170 degrees so that the cordon bleu roll stays warm. It's time to make our sauce. Add the shallots to the pan of butter and olive oil and give them a stir. Saute for about five minutes. Add in the sliced portobello mushrooms and give them a nice stir so that they're all coated with the butter and olive oil. Saute those for about 10 minutes until they're all golden brown. Add in the garlic puree and cook it for a minute and a half. Add in the Chardonnay wine and turn the heat up to high. Add in the chicken stock, the Natalie's lemon juice and the Natalie's lime juice and give it a stir and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Pull the pan out of the oven. We want the cordon bleu to cool before we slice it. Add in the heavy cream to the pan of sauce and then add in a large chunk of the Borson herb cheese and let the cheese melt into the sauce. Now we'll slice the veal cordon bleu roll. We're using a slicer, but you can use any knife that you want. Just make sure the knife is very sharp. We want to slice through the cordon bleu and not smash it. And now it's time to plate our dish. And there it is, veal cordon bleu. Thin sliced veal with black forest ham, smoked Gruyere cheese, Gouda cheese, and spinach. Rolled up and dipped in flour, eggs, Italian breadcrumbs, and sauteed in extra virgin olive oil. Drizzled with a mushroom and herb cheese wine sauce. It was delicious. Until next time, bon appetit. Bonjour, mon ami. We just returned from beautiful Paris, France. Paris is known for its amazing restaurants and exquisite food. So tonight we're making a classic French dish, Chateau Brion. We'll serve it with asparagus, potatoes au gratin, and a peppercorn cream sauce. It's going to be delicious, so stick around and we'll show you how we make it. Tonight is a taste of Paris, Chateau Brion. We're taking the prime cut of a filet mignon seasoning it with salt and cracked black pepper, and cooking it in a cast iron skillet, and topping it with a sauce made from butter, shallots, garlic, peppercorns, brandy, lemon juice, and heavy cream. Our side dish is potatoes au gratin, made from Yukon Gold potatoes, garlic, butter, heavy whipping cream, egg yolks, salt and pepper, nutmeg, and cheddar, gouda, and Parmesan cheese. And why are we making this dish tonight? Well, this week we were in Paris, France, a city with a charm like no other city in the world. Paris is where you'll find the Louvre, the world's largest museum. The Louvre is over 785,000 square feet and houses some of the most famous works of art like the Mona Lisa, painted by Leonardo da Vinci in 1503. One of the most recognizable structures in all of Paris is the iconic Eiffel Tower. Construction started in 1887 and was completed in 1889, exactly 100 years after the French Revolution. You'll find a cafe or a restaurant on every corner of every street in Paris. This city comes to life at night. The tiny streets are hundreds of years old, and the architecture is simply spectacular. The Abbey of Saint Germain was built in the 6th century AD, and the most famous medieval building in all of France is the iconic Notre Dame. Construction started in 1163 AD and continued for the next 100 years. Every restaurant in Paris is simply amazing. Chefs from all over the world travel to France to learn the culinary arts. Many cooking schools base their curriculum on the standards of French cuisine. 
Here are a few photos of the actual dishes that we had while we were in Paris this week. Every dish is a masterpiece all of its own. And it's here in Paris that you'll see food art on display every day and every night in the small kitchens of this historic city. Which brings us to our featured dish tonight. Chateau Briand, a prime center cut filet mignon topped with a peppercorn cream sauce and served with asparagus and creamy, cheesy potatoes au gratin. Our mise en place for tonight's dish is two center cut prime filet mignon steaks, two tablespoons of sunflower oil, two tablespoons of crushed black peppercorns, one stick of unsalted butter, two small shallots chopped, one cube of garlic puree or two minced garlic cloves, two ounces of cognac or brandy, two ounces of lemon juice, one cup of heavy whipping cream, one cup of beef broth, and one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. The first thing that we want to do is to season the meat before we cook it. It's best to do this step one day before, but if you don't have one day, then give it at least one hour prior to cooking. Apply a layer of salt to each side of the meat and press it in with your hand. Then wrap the meat back in the wrap and place it in the refrigerator overnight or one hour prior to cooking. The salt pulls the moisture from inside the meat, but then through a process called osmosis, the salted moisture gets pulled back into the meat. When you're ready to begin cooking, pat the fillets so that they are dry. This will help to form a nice charred crust when they're put into the pan. Season the fillets with a generous amount of cracked black pepper on all sides. Since the fillets are dry, the pepper might not stick, so press the pepper into the fillets. Add the sunflower oil to a cast iron skillet and turn the heat to medium high. The sunflower oil has a higher smoke point than olive oil. This high heat will help sear the fillets and give them a nice crust when they hit the hot pan. Cook for four minutes and don't touch it. You might get the urge to mash it down or move it around, but leave it alone so that the fillet builds up a charred crust. After four minutes, flip the fillets over and cook them for another four minutes. Look at that crust. The charred crust adds to the flavor and texture when you eat it. This is a fine dining restaurant trick of the trade. After four minutes, flip the fillets onto one side and cook them for two minutes. Use a different section of the pan as you flip the fillets. This will ensure that each part of the pan has some charred bits on it, which will help the flavor when we make our sauce later. Cook each of the four sides for two minutes per side, and then place the fillets onto a plate and put them into a 225 degree oven to continue cooking and to stay hot. Right now, the steaks are rare. If you like them more medium rare, then leave them in the oven for 10 more minutes. Otherwise, turn the oven off and let the steaks rest. And now it's time to make our sauce. Place four pieces of butter into the hot cast iron skillet. When the butter is melted, add in the chopped shallots and cook them for about three to four minutes until they're brown. Add in the garlic puree and cook it for about a minute. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to make the garlic puree. Add in a few ounces of brandy and turn the heat up to medium so that it begins to simmer. Add in the cup of beef broth, the cup of heavy cream, the tablespoon of Dijon mustard, the two ounces of lemon juice, and the two tablespoons of cracked black peppercorns. Give the sauce a nice stir and let it simmer for about 10 minutes so that the sauce can reduce and thicken. Add salt to taste, turn off the heat and add in a few pieces of butter, stir it in, and we're done. And now it's time to plate our dish.
And there it is, a taste of Paris. Chateaubriand, prime cut filet mignon with peppercorn cream sauce, served with asparagus and creamy, cheesy potatoes au gratin. Look in the description below for a separate recipe on the potatoes au gratin. It was delicious. Until next time, bon appetit.